everyone. My name is Dr. Hassan Mubarak, rheumatologist from Auckland Regenerative Clinic in New Zealand. I'm presenting a case of regeneration of full thickness supraspinatus rotator cuff tendon tear after treatment with autologous mesenchymal stem cell. This case has been published in Orthobiologic Journal. A bit about uh, rotator cuff tears, they are relatively common pathologies as we go up with the age due to degenerative process. And they can occur by or be aggravated by trauma. And they are commonly found to be incidental findings and they don't require any uh, treatment. But when they cause impairment of daily activities and functional impairment, especially affecting the sport life, as well as significant symptoms of pain, stiffness and limitation of movement, then surgical intervention might be required. There is a growing interest in the last decade in both animal and human trials and regenerative therapy, including platelet rich plasma and mesenchymal stem cells as an alternative to surgical intervention to treat the rotator cuff tears. This is counted as an experimental treatment with inconsistent findings. Thus, the therapy need to be discussed appropriately with the patients with informed consent. Our case is 70 year old, right hand dominant female presented with right shoulder pain in which she suffered following the three injuries to the right shoulder. The first one was in flight back in June 2018 when a bag fell out of the baggage rack landing on her right shoulder. With a conservative treatment with anti-inflammatory medications together with physiotherapy did not help significantly, thus she underwent ultrasound scan, revealed small partial tear of the supraspinatus tendon with an associated subacromial bursa thickening to 2.8 millimeter. And she underwent ultrasound guided subacromial injection by the radiologist. Soon after uh, that, uh, the patient develop another shoulder injury to the same area after catching her grandchild back in October 2018 with an ultrasound scan in the same facility revealed a small rotator cuff tear in the supraspinatus tendon with the recurrence of the subacromial bursitis. A further ultrasound guided subacromial injection was given by the same radiologist. Her condition was stable until she developed the third injury to the same shoulder in April 2019 when a four-year-old child uh, accidentally jumped on her right shoulder resulting in extreme pain. This time her family doctor suggested to refer her to the orthopedic surgeon for assessment and further investigations with surgical intervention considerations. At that time, a conservative uh, therapy with the use of anti inflammatory medications, and shoulder brace, and rehabilitation, and including manual therapy exercises and several acupuncture sessions. Despite that, her injury deteriorated. A repeat ultrasound scan 
was performed in June 2019, and that showed progression of the supraspinatus tear to full thickness tear. Anteriorly, it showed nine millimeter of the length uh, and 13 millimeter of the width have been torn. And the overlying bursa was falling to 2.9 millimeter. The MRI scan revealed full thickness tear in all anterior, middle, and posterior fibers with 7 millimeter retraction from the footprint, which is the tendon insertion at greater tuberosity, and 13 mm AP that with uh, uh, tear. There was a small gininohumeral joint effusion, but no evidence of capsulitis or labular, labral tear. And there was a subacromial uh, bursitis. Uh, as you can see in the uh, um, T2 imaging MRI, a full thickness supraspinatus tear as a, in the green arrow placed and the patient was advised to have orthopedic uh, input with surgical repair as there is no chance for con conservative treatment to help this full thickness tendon tear and the retraction of the tendon. The patient elected not to go for surgical intervention given she did not want to have the lengthy post-operative rehabilitation or exposed to general anesthesia with its risks. In her research, she uh, elected to try experimental therapy and she discovered uh, the non-invasive treatment in New Zealand, which is an accepted practice as long as uh, an informed consent and full details explained to the patients. She was assessed by us in August 2019 and ongoing right shoulder pain typical of supraspinatus tear with loss of function. And um, she had the disability index of the shoulder score was 88.3. Uh, the DASH score is a brief self-administered measurement of both symptoms and functional status for the last one week. And this is usually uh, written by the patient. And about pain, weakness, tingling and stiffness, functional status addresses multiple physical tasks of daily living like preparing meals, opening jars, and carrying heavy objects and gardening. And in her case, uh, the most important two tasks that she could not perform, uh, writing using a pen or typing in the keyboard, in which she was an editor of a book. Thus, uh, this has been impaired significantly, as well as she enjoyed uh, swimming for good fitness, and she wasn't able to do that either. It's recommended that the DASH score is before and after uh, the therapy uh, to compare the success of the treatment and the progression. And her physical examination in that time showed a significant impairment of movement with flexion to 80 degrees and abduction to 60 degrees, with both internal and external rotation reduced to 20 degrees. Although the flexion was limited to 80 degrees and associated with the stiffness, but the MRI scan did not show any evidence of capsulitis. Thus, we attributed all her disability and symptoms due to full thickness 
supraspinatus tear and subacromial bursitis. The initial management in that time, uh, given the option of treatment with a platelet rich plasma while awaiting for the qualified surgeon to take the uh, adipose tissue harvesting, and then this will go through a special lab uh, processing for six to eight weeks. And during that time, she elected to try the PRP while she was off the anti-inflammatory medicine for the last one week prior to PRP. And this was done using uh, uh, ACDA tubes with a total 8 ml of a solution, 7.5 ml of the PRP, and this was mixed with 0.5 ml of calcium gluconate, 10%. This to stimulate the platelets and secreting more growth factors. And this has been uh, studied well in the literature to use calcium. And we have used a linear probe in uh, L38 and sonocyte uh, portable ultrasound in an office. Uh, uh, based uh, clinic, and uh, we injected 5 mL into subacromial bursa and 3 mL intratendinous. Uh, the procedure was uh, associated with some discomfort and was done on sitting position, her right arm on the lap. We don't use any local anesthesia deep into the uh, bursa or tendon because this will affect the function of the uh, platelets and the stem cells. And it has been found that around 30% of the stem cells uh, uh, can be affected if you mix the, the stem cells with a deep injection with uh, particularly xylocin. And uh, this always been explained to the patient uh, to avoid deep-seated uh, local anesthesia, but we can put it uh, under the uh, skin and also in the, uh, at the site of the penetration. Virtual follow-up uh, following the uh, PRP, there was mild improvement of the symptoms, but this, not, this did not persist after one month. And of the recordings, there's no complications of the PRP. On 12th of um, September 2019, after informed consent, a lipoaspirate was taken and uh, from the abdominal uh, fat tissues and this was washed and the use of collagenase to extract the SVF which is a stromal vascular fraction and this was separated and digested through density centrifugation and this was plated down and cultured using DMEM media and 10% of HPL to expand the uh, mesenchymal stem cells population. And the cells were grown to 90% confluency over the period of just under six weeks and then cryopreserved until the injection date. The injections were prepared on the date of the treatment. The cells were washed and filtered before being resuspended in Hartmann solution with 10% HPL, which is the human platelet lysate, in syringes for administration. Cell count were measured manually and confirmed by hemocytometer. 
and a viability test was performed in a trypan blue exclusion dye as in table one and we counted as a three injection implant in the subacromial bursa and supraspinatus tendon substance and supraspinatus greater tuberosity insertion which is a footprint where the retraction of the uh, tendon is 99% viability of the cells and characterization of the mesenchymal cells was done using the flow cytometry and how we judge the uh, stem cells having a uh, good positive uh, effect where the positive markers of the CD90, CD73 and CD105 were positive on the majority of the uh, sample and the negative markers were in very low uh, values which is a CD14, 19, 34 and 45. On 23rd of October 2019 uh, we performed the stem cell injections after informed consent and under complete aseptic technique using 100 by 10 power 6 of mesenchymal stem cells, 1.5 mL volume combined with PRP, and in the same syringe, the injection was performed under ultrasound guidance, total amount of 11.5 mL. And the PRP was prepared in the same way as we prepared uh, without using stem cells, and we don't use calcium gluconate in this situation to avoid gelling formation. And this is an important step to avoid uh, because we don't want to interfere with the combination of the PRP together with the mesenchymal stem cells. Three areas were injected in the following way. Five mils was placed in the bursa in various depth and four mils was placed in the supraspinatus tendon substance where the full thickness tear can be seen clearly on ultrasound and 2.5 mils was injected at the greater tuberosity insertion to help the detached uh, retracted tendon to heal. We advise the patient to avoid any direct temperature changes like heat or cold. We use that for two weeks to avoid that and avoid also uh, alcohol because these are have negative uh, effect on the stem cell therapy. And to take it easy in the first two weeks before rehabilitation commenced. Physical therapy rehabilitation usually commences after two weeks. The patient was followed up virtually by phone and emails for uh, up to six weeks and there was no reported uh, complications. And in March 2020, she showed some healing of the tear occurring with some internal echoes present. This was detected on ultrasound scanned by the same radiologist who uh, dealt with her case from the beginning. Seven months post-treatment, the patient reported stopping all pain medications and experiencing no pain. She was able to swim again and pain-free sleep and was able to carry out normal uh, daily ac activities. On 25th of June 2020, the patient reported the right shoulder was painless and the DASH score significantly improved from 88.3 down to 16.3. Her um, range of motion has improved significantly uh, with deflection to 170 degree, abduction to 160 degree, uh, and external rotation uh, was 70 degrees as well as uh, internal rotation. MRI scan showed moderate thinning of the supraspinatus tendon insertion but the 
no tendon, no further tendon tear has been demonstrated, and there was complete healing and regeneration of the uh, tendon tear. And no longer full thickness tear, and also uh, there was some mild thickening uh, of the inferior glenohumeral ligament suggestive of low grade adhesive conjunctivitis. And this, as you can see in the arrows, is post treatment demonstrate complete healing of the supraspinatus tear. Our discussion is uh, tendons are subjected to degenerative changes due to a diminished regenerative uh, capacity from reduced blood supply, and thus they heal with the scars. And we try to find a way, like regenerative medicine, to avoid that. It has been shown in meta-analysis that stem cells improve the rehabilitation of rotator uh, cuff pathologies, and it has been shown uh, various studies can help the outcome in orthopedic uh, procedures. Uh, and in a good outcome in our patients is, uh, was related to a placement of large number appropriately under ultrasound a scan uh, with the use of uh, multiple areas injected with large number of mesenchymal cells, particularly intratendinous injection, where you can see the tear clearly uh, when you use an office ultrasound scan. And this is our references uh, used for this paper. I am Dr. Hassan Mubarak from Auckland Regenerative Clinic in New Zealand. Thank you very much for your attention.